Hello Driving Intelligence Community. This video is a long time in coming and I've actually got some viewers that have been asking me when I'm going to put this video out and it involves the installation of a double DIN head unit in my 10th generation F-150. Now a lot of you probably know that it's not an easy install because you have to grind or cut out some parts of the sub dash. Well, I'm going to, in this video I'm going to show you how to make that a little easier, not just the sub dash element but also the trim part. And one of the most key elements to the clean install that I did is this Metra kit, which actually, unfortunately, is the most expensive part of my install, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. The Metra unit actually replaces the entire trim panel that goes over the radio after the install, and you transfer a lot of your existing OEM functions over to this kit. So it's really nice, but as I mentioned, it is expensive, but if you want a quality install, you got to pay for it. Now this is going to be linked below as well as everything else I've used in this video. But I also want to talk about the head unit I selected. I had several criteria for the head unit. Number one, it couldn't be too expensive. Number two, I wanted something that allowed me to add a lot of peripherals like Torque Pro, uh, backup camera, GPS, all those things, the Bluetooth, all those things that go along with modern day vehicles. And for that reason, I decided to go with an Android unit. And when I looked at everything that was available out there, and I've seen some videos from other people testing different types of head units, I decided to go with an Atoto head unit, the A6 version. Now, it's not their top of the line, but again, I wanted to, to restrict the amount of money I was putting into this. So actually, the head unit was less expensive than the Metra, uh, the Metra kit, the trim kit that goes over the head unit after you install it. I've had this unit installed in my vehicle for several months, maybe close to a year, and I've had just about flawless performance out of it. Now, the Atoto company sells other peripherals like tire pressure monitoring, which I now have on my truck, and also uh, the Torque Pro, uh, not the Torque Pro app, it's actually included with the Atoto unit, but the dongle, the OBD dongle that communicates with that through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I don't remember which one. Either way, the, uh, their peripheral equipment is not very good. I have to tell you, just stay away from that. The radio is pretty solid. The doubled in unit really works nicely. Now, one of the ways I made this much easier for me was to go to a junkyard and get the sub dash out of a, a wrecked F-150. Now, you have to watch this video. I'll give you a little pointer later on to make sure you get the right one. I didn't get the right one the first time. I didn't realize there were a couple different versions of this, but... I'll talk about that later on in the uh, in the video, but the nice thing about that is here's where your HVAC control goes, and it's bolted to the top. Now the radio comes in through here. All you have to do is do a bench grind out. You don't have to do this in the vehicle, which makes a mess. You can grind out this top section here to get that doubled in unit to fit perfectly. And then you don't. This is done on your bench. You don't have all those different shavings, everything else going down inside the vehicle that have to be vacuumed out and could cause you problems later on. As I mentioned, everything I used in this install is going to be linked below. And one of those things is to get the proper dongle. And uh, the OBD dongle I used inevitably works very well once you get some of the, uh, the, the parameters set in the radio. When you load up the Torque Pro app, you got to make sure that some of these parameters are properly selected. Anyway, I think I'm getting into too much detail at this point. So what I want to do is go through the install. It's really pretty seamless, uh, pretty easy, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, by the way, when you go down and look at all those nice little uh, links that I've got for Amazon, all the parts that I've used, make sure you hit that thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Now let's get on with the install. So let's start off by seeing what's in the Toto box. Got uh, copious quantities of instructions. And there are quite a few wiring connectors in here. We've got the uh, external microphone, which I really like. That's one of the reasons I picked this unit. Quite a few components here. I'm gonna have to look at these instructions to see what this is all for. Some of the brackets that it mounts with. And then uh, this is a face plate. And then deep in here, well protected, is the actual Atoto unit. You can see it's very shallow. That's another reason why I like this one. I don't have to worry about any obstructions in the back. So let's see what's in the Metro bag. This, uh, this new dash bezel comes in black. It's supposed to have the, uh, the same finish. And you can either paint this or leave it as black. I think uh, initially I might just leave it black. We'll see. 
It's got uh, all the hardware. There's additional uh, mounting equipment in here for the double din unit. Again, this thing is designed specifically for the double din unit. A lot of parts and pieces in here. This uh, replaces, depending on if you have a four-wheel drive or not, it has different components in here that are replaced on your stock unit and integrated with some of the elements of the stock unit. So uh, there's a bit of work to be done on this before it's installed. Uh, there's two panels here, depending on the type of HVAC system you've got. Uh, this this el panel element depends on whether you, you have the automatic climate control in your vehicle or if you just have the, uh, the standard one, which I have. So this works with either one to really make it a custom unit. Of course, uh, there's also the instructions, which uh, actually seem to kind of be kind of thin. So I'm going to study these and then get started. My first step is to trim this sub bracket to make sure that the double din unit fits. Now there's some trimming that has to be done on the top side and I think looking at some of the instructions that this bottom edge needs to come off as well. But I need to determine how much of this comes off the top. Now to do that, I gotta first select which set of brackets, the mounting brackets for the double din unit need to be selected. I've got a manual HVAC control. So one of these is for manual, the other one's for automatic and they made it easy by marking on here which brackets you've got. So here's the auto, auto AC, and I'm gonna be working with the manual AC. Metro says to use the fasteners that come with the brackets that came in the box with the double din unit to mount their brackets to the radio. These brackets won't mount directly to the double din unit, so I have to use the brackets that came from a Toto to start off, and then I can mount these brackets on top. The installation is made really easy by Metro because their adapter has the same color coding as the wires that come with the, uh, the Atoto unit. So all I gotta do is splice these together and then this plug goes directly into the existing wiring harness on the truck. I'm gonna make a solder connection between the wiring harness that came with the radio and the unit that came from Metro. I'm adding some shrink wrap after I do the solder connection to make sure it's nice and tight. And I'll link all these products below just to make sure that you can get them if you want them. All right, so now that the double din unit is ready and the sub panel is ready to be installed, I need to dismantle the dash. And that's going to require getting all these plastic pieces, bezels out of the way. Uh, the reason I've got to do that is because that sub panel is integrated underneath this overall dash piece here. I've pulled the, the radio bezel off and that just pulls straight out. It's just some push pins that go in here. Next thing I'm gonna do is get the radio out and I'm gonna use a special tool that enters into these two locations. I'll link that product below. And then it's uh, the next easiest part to remove is this panel below the, uh, the gauges. You just pull it out and then you have a bunch of screws to remove. So that's gonna be the hardest part. To get the radio out, I'm gonna show you a little tip. I've already taken it out, obviously, but uh, these kits work, but if you don't use them properly, they can be a little bit difficult. So I wanted to show you the proper way to get these out. Now, when you push it in, you only wanna push this into this little nub here at this point here, so it doesn't go in deep. A lot of people will push them in too far and then you can't manipulate this arm here. You just wanna push it in enough to get those little tabs or that little nub in there. And then you're gonna pull outward to pull that little clip in to allow you to release the radio. So obviously you have it on both sides and you're gonna pull it out and pull the radio at the same, pull these outward and then pull the radio out at the same time. I originally thought I needed to remove the center console and lower panel to get to the radio's subframe. All I had to do was get this panel out, which gave me access to all the screws that hold the top panel in. And now I can easily take it out and get to this sub panel. With that upper dash panel out of the way, now it's a real simple process of getting the sub panel out after I take off this HVAC unit. And that's just a bunch of plugins in the back, no different than anything else in the vehicle. HVAC control system is taken out and again it's just a bunch of plugins. The hardest part or the most cautious part I recommend is when you're getting taking the vacuum lines out, you pull these tabs outward gently to release that vacuum section there. But again, just pull them out gently or they'll break with this old plastic. Okay, sub panels out, but the hardest thing to get out is a screw that goes through this hole right here into the back of the panel. 
and you're going to have to come in through the front with a socket, a seven millimeter socket to get it out and the whole thing pops out easily. Now for the watch out that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The sub frame comes in two styles, one for the EATC, which is the electronic automatic temperature control, and the other one is for the manual temperature control. The first one I bought was for EATC. That's this one here. This opening is different than that is for the manual temperature control. So otherwise, the, the dimensions here are the same. The dimension for the double DIN unit is going to be the same where you got to cut out up here. This is the problem. So if you go and get one, and they're usually pretty cheap, I think I got this for about 10 bucks. Uh, it makes it, a, like I said, a lot easier to grind it out on the bench than it is to do this in the vehicle. Radio bezel has been removed and per the instructions, I've dismantled it completely. I've taken out the vents. I've also taken out the, uh, the passenger airbag system or switch, and I've also taken out the 4x4 switch. Those all have to be transferred over to the new bezel. I've already got these mocked up in place. But uh, the kit comes with all the components to match all this up in these areas with these open areas here. So this is made to work with all the F1, 10th Gen F-150s and also the Expedition, possibly Navigator. I'm not sure what the Navigator looks like, but definitely the Expedition and the F-150. This kit covers all versions. 4x4 switch is installed. It's a little bit of a puzzle, but I got it all together because there's so many extra pieces. And it looks pretty good, although I would have to say that the fit and finish is not perfect. That gap right there is bigger than this gap, but it still looks good. Everything's assembled on the radio bezel, even my air freshener. I've got the airbag and the 4x4 switch in here. Now, the instructions recommend that you paint the vents. I didn't really care. It's an interesting contrast that matches with the vehicle. You can either paint this or paint this. I'm going to leave it for now since it's winter and it's not a good time to paint. Final prep for the radio install, and there's a lot of wires to hook up here. So before you put this panel on, you want to put on this GPS module. This uh, communicates with the satellites to go to your maps. You've got your backup camera set up here. You've got two USBs, one for a peripheral, and I'm going to hook in their tire pressure sensor here and another one for the foam. And then you've got just a bunch of other wires that uh, the only thing I'm going to use this for is the external mic. So you have to plug this in to make that happen. And then as I showed before, I've got the spliced wire connection that plugs in the back that goes to the harness in the vehicle. All right, are we having fun yet? Look at all those wires. That is a spaghetti mess. Had to push everything back in there. I've got the external mic, the GPS unit in there. I've also routed the USBs down here that I'll pull up into the console. But now I just need to screw in the unit and do a test. Removal of the top dash panel provides a lot of access to route other cables like the external mic, the iPhone lightning cable, and my SCTX4 wire that was hanging across the dash. I routed the mic, lightning cable, and SCTX4 wire across the front of the gauge cluster and through the A pillar, locating everything up high and out of the way. To do this, either loosen or remove the A pillar trim. Quick jump to the finale. Everything's reinstalled, reverse of removal, really simple, so I don't need to go through that and make this video even longer. I really like the Metro unit, the stash kit, and it really fits in tight here with some adjustment of the radio inside up and down, slightly up and down, and that's through the brackets on the sides. The quality is better than I said. I remember I mentioned here that there were some quality issues, but when I look at it and the fit and finish, it's really good, so I really like it, and I'm glad I spent the extra money to, to make this happen. Now what I thought I'd do briefly was to show how this integrates with my iPhone through Apple CarPlay and some of the features of the Ototo through my Apple phone. So if you have deeper questions or you want a much more involved review of this and how it operates in my Tension F-150, you got to leave comments below. But quickly, when I first connect the phone, I'll have to initialize it by hitting the car link and that brings me to the Apple CarPlay. And here you can see all the features that are available through Apple CarPlay. Maps is one I use, and uh, also Pandora and my text messages. So that's really nice features, but I want to go to some of the things that really turn me on about this. The Torque Pro app, once you initialize this you uh, and get this connected to your OBD dongle, which is running right down there, you can go in here and customize the different types of gauges you want. Here I've got the uh, the transmission temperature, timing, engine timing, intake air temperature, coolant temperature. Here you can see the oxygen sensor voltage. 
Uh, these are the uh, the fuel trims and engine load, zero to 60. Lots of nice little features. Tons of apps already loaded in. Uh, another one that I'm really interested in is the tire pressure monitoring system. And this shows me the tire pressure and temperature, all customizable for alarm points. And the last thing I didn't mention is this Gamma overlay. So you go into Google Play Store, I believe that's what it's called. You look for the Gamma app, and I really love this. I like the way it's laid out. You got the clock in the middle. It even has a Ford Center uh, logo here. Not really a logo, but it's part of the clock. Uh, then you have, I could program all these buttons, the, the radio, the Google Maps, CarLink, Equalizer, Torque Pro, apps. I, I customize that by selecting those as the buttons that I want, including the, uh, the little symbols here. So that's just a quick overview. Um, I don't want to go into any more because already the video is just far too long. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.